Hello, welcome to my channel. So behind me you can see a working digger. I bought this digger four years ago, or nearly five now, and it broke down pretty, pretty much immediately. And I blew the engine, so we had to do a whole engine rebuild. Today, Ashley, who has loads of experience with diggers, is going to go through a couple of things that I'll need to do on a daily basis, just general maintenance, and just to get me more acquainted with the machine. So I thought we might as well do a video for people, for first time owners of excavators, just to give you a bit of a idea. Right. Ashley, I hear my digger has nipples. Yes, it does. <laughs> Great lots, nipples. Lots of them. I don't know how many it has. Um, you, you basically need, yeah, you need to grease your machine. Um, it's, the, it's the lubrication system. Um, if, you, if you're working your machine and you're getting a squeak, it needs grease. Okay. It should be greased to avoid squeaks because squeaks are two bits of bare metal and that's not what there's no there's no need for that so every cylinder or ram has a pivot at each end and each of those pivots has a greasing system it will have a grease nipple in the end of the pin okay where the grease goes in along the pin and then out into the ram or it will have a grease nipple actually screwed into the ram that will go in and you basically have to find those grease nipples. If you buy an old machine, there might not be a grease nipple, there might just be a hole. It'll be threaded, you'll need to find, if you could take a grease nipple out of somewhere else, it'll probably fit and put it in, and you'll know what size the nipple is to go and buy some, they're not expensive. So you said yesterday we were doing it and when you pour in the grease, you see it come out. For example, if you're putting it here, yeah. you'll see it come out in the joints. You'll see a little, a little push of grease coming out there. And that's and when you know. If you're greasing it once a week or something and you're seeing a little piece of grease coming out there, that's, that'll be good. Yep, it's coming out there. A machine that you've been using for months, you actually, you'd, you'd say you want to see grease sticking around here. If you come and you're going to buy a machine, and it's all spec span, bone dry, nothing, you could perhaps wonder whether it's getting greased. Maybe it's just been pressure washed, but... Yeah, yeah. Grease is the cheapest maintenance you've got. Yeah, for sure, yeah. Yeah. prevention, <laughs> prevention. Yes. So each each cylinder yep. will have one at the top yep. and one at the bottom? Yes. Okay, so how many nipples does my machine have? Well, you, I mean, count your cylinders. <laughs> Let's and see, so there's a cylinder here, and there's a, that's, a, that's a grease nipple, right? Yeah, there'll be more, but let's co cover the cylinders first. First cylinder is this one. Yeah. So we have a grease nipple there. Yep, grease nipple there. One. And it's, it's an angled type. Okay. Which... Just for access, so, to, it, so to, the thing well, is straight. to make it easier. So then there'll be another one somewhere here, I guess. No. There, at the end of the thing. Oh, there's, there's two here. Ah, but that's something different. We'll come to that in a minute, Look. Okay. We'll just think, talk cylinders, Cylinders, right? okay. One, One pivot there needs grease, and a pivot there needs grease. This was greased yesterday. Oh, here. So on that one, okay. the grease nipple so one, is, in two. The, is in the end of the pin. Okay. Every cylinder, every ram has one either end. Okay. Beyond that, you have this linkage here for your bucket. Yeah. This is the main pivot. Okay. That needs greased. So that goes one there. Right. Seven. This one. Eight. One there. Nine. So yeah. the point is, where you have something that's moving, yeah. there's you a... grease. <laughs> it, it was manufactured <laughs> to be greased. There'll be one somewhere. So You'll there's one, two, three, four. Yeah. So that makes ten so far. Yep. So and, at, and at the back here, um, and there's another two here for that. Well, they don't grease the pin. The pin's fixed, but it's pivoting. These. It's pivoting inside there. Okay, 11, 12. Yeah. You hear people talking about bushes. Mm -hmm. There will be a probably a bronzy, like a bronze tube, as it were, pushed into here and pushed into here. Yeah. And those are wearing parts. And you get an older machine. See, there's a bit of slap here. Uh huh. That is basically going to be wearing the bushes. Now, if you want to, you'll be able to take the pin out, take it off, put it in a bench, and either hammer out or press out 
The the yeah. old bush, the, the one away one, and put in a and new one. New ones, they're not that expensive. Okay. And that gets you back to as she was when she was new. Okay. If you're buying an older machine on a budget, and you just want to do some digging, it'll be fine. Okay. It'll be fine for another thousand hours or something. Okay, so that's twelve nipples so far. Right. Um. This machine has an offset dig. Okay. Which is this cylinder yep. here. Again, one over pivot, there. Pivot either end. One. And the other end of the ram is concealed, so that's actually the greaser oh, wow. part there. That's good access, yeah. So, but the point is, buying an old machine, you might need to look for that. It could be there. It could be reaching down in here. But if as long as you know that each cylinder has to have one and eight at each end. One at either end. There yeah. has to be a grease system. Thirteen, fourteen. Right, the blade. The blade. We've got two. Right, some machines have a single ram in the middle, some of two. Okay. There's a ram, one, ra two, two on the ram, plus there'll be one in here, which we haven't got to yet, look, on the end of that arm. Okay. Where it hinges to the chassis. Okay, where's that some, one? Well, you need, you, <laughs> you'll need to turn it around and get down and down and find it, it'll be in there. So that's 20. So she shall hence Fourth, be known as constants of the twenty nipples. So what's left? The the swivel, I yeah. guess. What's yeah. it called? The, the slew ring. ring. Well, there's there's another one here. There's one here, and there will always be one on this pivot here. This is your main. Um, well, on a wheeled machine where you have 180 degrees of movement. Yeah. That's the main pivot that she turns on. Um, there might be two in, you know, you'll need to look and find them. On Where is that one? Oh, there's one there. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I see it. So, the pin will be fixed in this part and swiveling there, but there'll also be one up here, it might be around the other side. Okay. You need to look for them. Oh, there, here it is. It's here. Yeah, right? Yeah. Tracks. Um, right. On this machine, and on older machines, if you take the little plate off, or there might not be a plate, there'll just be access. Uh -huh. Oh, we took that off last time you were here, eh? Yeah, there's a big screw thread in there, have like a big heavy duty, big, big bolt. Yeah. And as you screw that, it pushes the idler. This is the idler here. Okay. It pushes the idler out to tension to the tracks. To tighten the tracks. More modern machines than this. Yeah. We'll have a grease nipple in there. And you simply, it's a little cylinder, and you simply pump grease into it, and that pushes it out. And so when we opened it, was there a grease nipple no, in no, there? No, no, no. No, it's a different system. You either okay. have a screw system to push okay. it forward, or it's a little cylinder that you fill with grease. Okay. So the, if your machine will have either a screw either side, or a grease nipple either side okay. for the tracks. Grease those nipples, boy. Yep, you see it? The grease just came out of there. That means it's well lubricated. Then to take it off. That's it. Oh, it's hard. Well, it's not taking it. So, when a grease nipple is blocked like that, I have to undo it. Like I did the other with a, two with a spanner, with a yeah. spanner, and then put it in like WD-40, or you can heat up diesel. You said if it's really bad. Okay, so I'll have to do that but, one. <laughs> Safety first. <laughs> <laughs> Try WD-40, and if that yeah, doesn't yeah, yeah. work, buy a new grease nipple. Okay. If you find that you can't get the end to go onto the grease nipple yeah. at all. It's probably just grit that's in that wee recess. Okay. So get a little screwdriver and scrape it out. The point is that when you grease her up, when you start work, you should actually see a certain blackness or what happens is, is dirt sticks to the grease around here. Okay. And that's what you want to see. If you're not actually getting any sign of dirt or grease sticking here, yeah. she's not getting grease. Okay. If so she's the other point about if you buy a machine and yeah. you're just doing this going round to start with and you find a grease nipple that you can't get grease into, 
that suggests the last guy couldn't get grease into it either. And, yeah. It is a major importance that you get something done with that to see yeah. just what the score is. I have it up because it's easier to work at. Strictly, I suppose you should have it on the ground. That's cool. So now it's going to drop? It's going to swing to the front. Very good. Easy. Too easy. Very good. <laughs> I thought Maybe you can make a cup of tea. You've seen those videos where they make cups of tea with their diggers and... <laughs> Eventually, look for this thing, I'm sure you could. <laughs> okay, so apart from grease, what's the... Like, every, every time I'm going to use it in the day, I come, I check the oil level, right? Like any... Open the hood. Open the hood, check the oil level, the water level. Yep. What I do is pull the dipstick, check, check, check the dipstick. To check your radiator for oil, assuming you're coming to it in the I morning and it's cold, it I just dip my finger in. If there's water there, that's good enough. Maybe with your hood, you won't be able to access it easily, but it's better. It's up quite high. Check. Um, there's, obviously, the gauge is once you turn. There's, there's not much else. And the no. other thing I do is put just touch the just fan. Just check bit. the fan belt if it's. It's just second nature. One, yeah. two, three. Takes okay. no time at all. Check your hydraulic level. Okay. There's a level glass. Yep. Um, and it doesn't make any sense unless the machine is level. Obviously, yeah. And you know you have a minimum and a maximum yeah. in there. That is for your hydraulic oil filter, filter which is a 500 hours six month service or check in there that's your diesel filler of course so we we're talking um no doubt i'm going to be working and a hose is going to blow um and lose some expensive hydraulic oil so what i just turn it immediately switch the engine off set the, um, set the, so just set the bucket set, down set it down and switch her off immediately. and she should start i mean eventually stop flowing and losing oil it will what you have to try and do is basically minimize whatever damage there might be. If you're on a road and you have oil, you'll need to be able to clean it up. So sawdust is good, dry sand, you can buy oil absorbent um, crystals. Yeah, okay. Stuff, but cat litter. Cat litter. <laughs> What about working with it? I mean, I'm going to obviously gain experience, hopefully, the more I use it, but if you're going uphill, should you have the blade at the back or the front, or the bucket obviously should most of the time be as low as possible? You need to think about your machine stability. So if you are on nice level ground, digging a little trench, your machine will be stable. But as soon as you start to go onto rougher ground, and places you can't actually see with bushes and things. Yeah. There can either be holes, boulders and all of that, or a tree stump. You think you're getting along fine, but you catch underneath with a stump, for example. You basically shouldn't be driving anywhere that you can't actually see, see. what you're going into. And if you're going onto that kind of ground, treat your bucket like a walking stick. Yeah. And you basically walk along and dab and push with the bucket and you know what's there. Feel it out. 
not so much in Portugal, <laughs> but in Scotland, you can go on to bits that are nice and green and flat, but they're actually almost liquid. And if you don't actually know that and tap with the bucket, you can be getting bogged before you know where you are. What about getting bogged? Don't. <laughs> you um, can't just lift yourself up with your with the blade and the and, and the bucket. Uh, in theory, once you have plenty of experience, that's how it's done. But for the inexperienced person, um, it very often um, just, makes, just makes it worse. Just makes things worse. My advice would be that normally, when you're digging for stability, you'd be using the bucket at the front so you're actually reversing the carriage as you're trenching with the blade on the ground keep the tracks on the ground nice and steady but the blade down so that as you're digging the leverage point isn't the front of the tracks it's forward here and that's how you actually manage to dig with a little light machine especially when you get onto things that are one or two tons those really light ones the blade is essential. The blade on them is not for dozing, it's for stability. Okay. Um, so that's how you're going trenching. But if you're on very soft ground, I would always have the blade in the direction of heading. You do it the other way around. Okay. And if you have a soft area, you would be reversing in. And the reason that is, if you reverse in, and your tracks are sinking and you turn around and you have to help to pull yourself forward you can ease the front of the machine up a little and you can keep the blade up and you get out fair enough if you do it the other way around and you have the blade at the back at the back as you're traveling and you start to lift the front a little bit it's and drop. it sinks maybe you can't lift the blade high enough yeah 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 <laughs> yeah so I see. You, you always reverse into anything that's going so to soft. be wet or suspect. Okay. What about getting it on, on the back of a truck without a ramp? Is that hard? Um, <laughs> if you... I've seen them do it. It looks pretty cool. Uh, it's not for the inexperienced. <laughs> no way. Eh? Not at all. If you, if you have a high truck and a nice high bank and it's level and the truck is back in, it's basically driving off something level onto the truck. Fair enough. If you have a beaver tail, as they call it, that's designed for loading this kind of machinery, yeah, it's pretty standard. Um, once you've done it a time or two, that's the safest way to do it, with proper ramps attached to the wagon. Uh, anything else you can think of before, before you head off? In your situation, Luke, um, you know where the pipes and cables are because you put them in. It would be quite easy for someone to buy a little excavator, uh, especially in a semi-urban urban situation, big back garden, and go digging and find that you've cut next door neighbor's phone cable, <laughs> toilet pipe, yeah, yeah. and that's all big, big expense, and it's all exactly down to you because yeah. you caused and it And it's all. avoidable, I mean. And, and the point is, if you hit an electric cable, you might not be here. Yeah. It, it, it's just yeah. so scary. So, so just know where you're digging. Know where you're digging, know what's in there. And if you don't know what's in there, that's your first job is find out. Again, for experienced drivers, there's ways that you actually can strip it in layers with someone helping you and so on. But those are separate topics. Yeah. Alrighty. Well, that's about it for today. Hope you learned something. And if you've got a new excavator, hopefully this will help you get a bit of an introduction anyway. Take it easy and I'll see you next time. Thanks Ash.